right. Okay, good evening, everyone. We got the gavel back. Um, and so it's five o'clock, and let's go ahead and begin our Utility Service Board meeting. As um, a reminder, our mission is to enhance the quality of life in our community by providing safe, sustainable, and high-quality drinking water, wastewater, and stormwater services in a cost-effective manner, promoting public health, economic vitality, and environmental stewardship. And if any board member has any personal or financial conflict with any issues or individuals on the agenda, then please be sure to recuse yourself during those portions of the meeting. We'll start out and we'll ask if we have any petitions or communications from the public. Okay. And we have one here. And um, the microphone is just for cats, but if you'll please um, introduce yourself and we'll be happy to hear what you have to share. Thank you. Uh, my name is Antonia Bacilupa Album. This is my husband, Aaron Pacheco. We came and spoke with you all in May um, about our sewer line, had tree roots going down under Kirkwood. Um, at the time, we were hoping that we could discuss changing the policy that meant that that line was um, our responsibility beyond our property line, which you all seemed open to, but obviously that's a longer process than just one public comment. Um, and at the time, you suggested we file a tort claim with the city, which was sort of the proper avenue to go down. So we are here today to just provide you with an update um, that we filed the tort claim. It was denied, as expected. Um, and now we're sort of in the what next <laughs> question of sort of what is our next move. I did send an email to the board last week asking of like, is this my moment to appeal? Like, do I, is it possible to appeal through the board as there is that section in the policy that says, you know, any appeals related to decisions that relate to the utility board can be brought to the board. I was redirected to the risk management folks, um, which was who we filed the tort claim with. And they, they sort of recused you of responsibility for an appeal. <laughs> I don't know if that is the way that this goes, but that was what, uh, that was the communication that I had received. So that is where we are at at this point. I don't know if I'm allowed to s like hear updates on your end or if you have any questions for us. Um, that is where we are at right now and sort of not sure what the next move is for us. Um, thank you. Um, I, I may have just missed it. I did not receive the email. Okay, um, so um, I, this is our update from you today, um, and I um, just in conversation, not as an official meeting, which I've mentioned to you, that I've been speaking with Matt Flaherty, who is your representative for your um, your area, um, and so I know he'd been in communication with you, but I was not clear on the, den I did not know that your appeal had been denied. Um, as of like last week. Okay. So. <laughs> um, and unfortunately, he was not able to be here tonight due to another meeting commitment. Um, and so I, I am not, um, I, I don't know anything about the appeals process. And I don't know if any of our other, if you have want to comment there or if we have questions from our board members, comments. I just wonder if, uh, since the tort claim has been filed, whether Chris is tracking this. Yes, thank you. Good evening, Chris Wheeler with City Legal. Um, so we have different types of appeal process, administrative appeals that are brought before this board. And um, the we have sort of a blanket general appeal that exists in our rules and regulations for people who um, <coughs> Uh, have different types of issues with regards to like their their water bill things like that but we don't have an appeal process just as a general administrative appeal process just for general grievances and so all that means is there isn't an, a, an administrative appeals process that is required to be exhausted before a person who believes they've been wronged by an administrative decision could take that issue up with a trial court so when a notice of appeal, I'm sorry, when a tort claim notice is brought to the attention of the city and that gets denied, all that does is clear a person uh, for an opportunity then to go through a trial process through actual litigation. Um, there, 
in this instance, there is no administrative appeal to be exhausted. They've, they're walking down the litigation path versus coming through an administrative appeal. I don't know if that makes any sense, but that's the process that happens. I don't know if that makes any sense to you, and I'm happy to try and answer more questions. Yes. So they can appeal the tort denial with Well, the there's court. no appeal. Oh. They just have to bring a lawsuit against the okay. city now. Um, they, they, they let the city know that they have an intention to do so, which is called a tort claim notice, and the city can negotiate to resolve that tort claim notice or just deny it, which then gives a person the opportunity to take it straight to a trial court for litigation. There's nothing that we This board can doesn't have do. any jurisdiction yeah. to do anything at this point. So just to, to remind me, this was this case was where there were uh, street trees in, that were uh, um, owned or maintained by the city that were causing the the impact to the um, the sewer line. And, but because it was uh, inward from the, the main, it was considered your responsibility. Yes, is that and correct? in particular because we live on Kirkwood, the cost is somewhat astronomical to attempt to fix it. Um, when we received quotes, it was upwards of $50,000 to make this kind of repair. And we know that we're not sort of alone in this situation, so, you know. We can't necessarily appeal the tort claim here, but our hope is that these policies that require the homeowner to care for the line beyond the boundaries of their property could potentially be rethought or opportunities could be made available to help Bloomington residents who are in this kind of situation where for, for us to make that repair, it's far beyond our means. And I don't know that it makes sense to have us sort of tearing up and blocking Kirkwood in order to make this repair. And, and so, because this is in a litigation posture, I don't really want to talk too much about the city's position. First of all, I'm not involved in that decision, so I'm not really sure exactly what the city's position is. But if it's a city tree that has caused damage to private property, this, this department doesn't own those city trees. And so this department with this board don't have any real say in whether or not a city owned tree did any damage to their private property. I will say this, however, I've done quite a bit of research as a result of this matter to look at what other utilities might be doing around the state with regards to this type of issue and have found that there are some programs out there being implemented where people can basically pay into, um, into the utility on a, a small amount on a monthly basis or some amount over time that basically buys them it puts them into account so that when their, you, their lateral service line has to be repaired at some point, they've got funding in there to get it paid, uh, to get it repaired. Um, and I don't know whether those utilities are actually going in and doing the work at a lower cost, and, but dipping into that fund. I don't know how all of that works, but I shared that information with our engineering department. I don't know if I might have shared it with you as well, uh, James. Um, but th so there are some programs out there, and we are looking at whether or not this department would start to implement some kind of a program similar to that or some other ideas. And that was something that was being worked on with Matt Flaherty. Yeah, so um, I can give you a little bit of an update of where that is. Um, so we, we first put together a, a group meeting with um, some folks internally to try to assess, like, the magnitude of where we were looking at. Um, mains and looking at petitions for new sewer connections and trying to get a realistic number of how many sewer laterals may be out there that are still clay and that we may that way we can come up with a dollar figure that could help us understand the magnitude of this and so we're getting close to getting that number down once we get that down um, we're going to put a committee together we will have one of you on that committee uh, I think Council Member Flaherty wants to be on that committee. We're going to have a member from uh, HAN, some of our engineering folks, and a, probably a downtown engineering, uh, a city of Bloomington engineering um, person. 
Um, and then we'll discuss the financial ways, like Chris said, that these other communities are doing this and to see what we think is a good way for uh, the city of Bloomington to move forward in addressing this because it's not just Kirkwood. It doesn't matter once you start cutting the street and repairing the street back to um, city of Bloomington standards, it's $40,000 because it, and we can do that it's cheaper because we have all the in-house personnel and, and technique skills to do that. Um, and so we're looking at that um, and we will be reaching out to you shortly to ask who wants to be on that committee. But we have looked at it right now, we're doing a GIS analysis to kind of whittle down the number of connections and laterals and how far and how many and all that kind of stuff to be able to present to the board to look at financial options. Thank you. Option would still require the ratepayers to foot the bill. And I assume if they move without any damage or need for the money, they would get that money back. If you if they do it before we have a program in place, or what do you say? I thought the sorry. program involved people putting in a small <laughs> amount of money <laughs> each time. That that was just one one way a community is doing. We have not decided as a board or community how we're going to do that so it would do, to totally depend on how we do it we're bringing in hand to look at other like options for grants and things of that nature and how we can fund those programs okay. other questions or comments what's the symptoms again that you're experiencing just so refresh my memory if we do nothing every six to nine months or so, we've only lived here for a couple of years, but every six to nine months or, go, uh, or so, our pipe backs up and we have a sewage flood um, inside the lowest outlet in our house, which happens to be in one of the showers. And, so, And um, we know there's other people in the neighborhood who have this issue and the roots are growing into the eight inch main sewer. So the entire neighborhood backs into our house, which has happened twice now. So we have been trying to mitigate this through like regular um, snaking and you, you know sending true reed killer down the, down the main, um, not ideal. But that's sort of how we're trying to mitigate it in the meantime to preserve the pipe as long as possible. But when we did get it snaked, the technician was like, well, the, every time we snake it, although it helps, every time we snake it, it does, you know, impact the the sustainability of the pipe in the long term so we're doing our best to make this last <laughs> so there's no possibility of just taking the tree down and killing the roots i mean it, it is not our department i <laughs> but, it's, but it's somebody's department yeah yeah and, and i know other departments are looking at we had a conversation with risk about this um and uh parks department owns street trees yeah and they were in the meeting. We do love the tree. I understand. There's a, there's a cost to it. <laughs> but there is a cost to it. Yeah. <laughs> What's the nine month, uh, six to nine month cost to do that snaking to get some? Um, it's about eighty dollars per snake, and then another, I think, thirty for the root killer. So about a hundred bucks, two hundred bucks per year. We, we also got a warning from the plumber that we're snaking an old clay pipe. Yeah. And so there's a risk that that pipe collapses and sure. obviously we can't afford it so we'll, it'll essentially condemn the house so we can't live in it we can't use a sewer and i know there's other properties that are in this situation where they don't live in the house because the sewer line isn't working great or something like that and someone down like i said down the line is having this issue and and um you find folks came out and actually snaked the eight inch and showed me pictures of the root ball in the eight inch from somebody else's lateral that flooded our house with sewage from the whole neighborhood. And so we, we are, we're not even here to address their lateral. I don't even know where that one is. Obviously you guys might know, but. Thank you. I have a, another question for Chris. Um, is, is there any policy or precedent on like other types of damage that might be caused by city planted and owned trees like limbs coming down or things that haven't been maintained properly like I know that if in for a private property if you know 
if a tree falls on someone else's stuff, there's different ways that it can, the responsibility can fall. So is the city just, yeah. I'm not in, I'm sorry. I, I don't work in the risk department and I don't handle the claims that come in. So I'm not familiar with what issues come up with regards to trees that are falling and damaging other people's private property and what risk does with regards to how those are handled and what negotiations occur and what gets paid out for what. I just, I don't get involved in but that. But would there I, be I, a policy? Is there like a standing policy on how that works? Like I, whose responsibility is I'm guessing is that it? what is relied upon is, is state law on who is responsible for what when trees do damage to property. Yeah. You know, where's the property line? Who owns the tree? Uh, you know, and so I don't know what was looked at in this case, unfortunately, and I don't know what, mm -hmm. what will be the ultimate decision made, assuming that a lawsuit would be brought with regards to what would, it, you know, what, a, what the allegations would be as a city owned tree damaging private property. I don't know how that would all end up shaking out because again, I, I'm not involved. You know, if I harken back to the days of my own private practice, this was quite a few years ago though. Um, I have some vague familiarity with property rights and property laws and what you do with trees and how you handle them. Um, I have also reviewed uh, situations where our infrastructure has been damaged by a private property owner's private tree. And so I'm aware of some of how that works with what we do to try and negotiate with private mm -hmm. property owners when their stuff is damaging city owned property. So I would assume it's a goose gander thing, um, but it usually shakes out through some sort of negotiation through litigation um, at, at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, for you guys, it might be worth trying to look up that policy because I had a tree fall on my neighbor's car and I have dealt with this myself. So um, I would look that up and maybe get some legal advice. Yeah. We picked a lot of a lot of it results to insurance. And insurance doesn't even cover yeah. this thing. So, questions or comments? Yeah, thank you for coming yeah. in and giving us an update. Thank you. I really appreciate the update um, on what's been happening so far as well. Hopefully, we can see that keep moving forward, and we'll we'll check back in in a few months. Thank you. I'm sorry that we yes. don't, we're not able to provide an answer for you today. We definitely okay. appreciate the update. Appreciate our team for continuing to work with this with other departments, and hopefully, come to some kind of resolution that helps you and other homeowners, which was your intent when you came um, in the spring to not only help your situations but others. Um, I'm sorry if it's you know heading down the litigation road. That I hope that that's not a large expense for you that they're able to do that through your own research or other resources in the community um, because obviously this is already a big expense for you um, and I hope our resolution can be um, timely so that um, we don't get to a point where that you know uh, you don't have the option of the snake every six to nine months yeah. um, and um, I don't know how far you know much parks is involved as far as their board but if it's their tree then um, you know maybe maybe speak to their board, I don't know. So um, good luck to you and we'll look yeah. forward to hearing an update, hopefully with some good good resolutions for you. Thank you very much, thank we really you. appreciate your time. Okay, thank you. Are there any other petitions or communications? Okay, moving on, we have an appeal of denial for sanitary will serve request at 5510 West State Road 48. Welcome. If you'll please just state your name for cats. It doesn't pick you up in the room. It's just for our recording. Thank you. My name is Andy Gashke, and I'm the pastor at Stone Ridge Baptist Church. So we really appreciate the services that we've received from the city of Bloomington Utilities. It's been uh, nothing but positive. Just want to start out with a very quick example of that. Um, we're a church that uh, has used your services for about 10 years. I started the church uh, back in 2010. And um, along with that, I received a letter with our bill that said, that said um, you may have a toilet flap that is not sealing because we've noticed a spike in your bill. And honestly, I was very impressed with that because at an administrative level, somebody thought 
let's utilize the resources of our customers so they're not wasted. We investigate it in the women's restroom. Sure enough, one of the flaps wasn't closing. And of course, it allows your resources to stretch to other customers. So I say that to say I have total confidence that of your professionalism, your visionary, and good use of your resources. So the, what I just wanted to state is in regards to our appeal, I wanted to respectfully uh, express three groups in Bloomington that I think would benefit from extending sewer services to the above address, 5510 West State Road 48. And the first group is, uh, I believe it would benefit the west side of our Bloomington community because I-69 is bringing a lot of traffic and it will continue to bring a lot of traffic over the next decades. And different communities are vying for the business of the truckers or the hotels or the restaurants, whatever it may be. And so as a resident of Bloomington, um, I'm very desirous of seeing Bloomington continue to expand and to have a thriving, forward-thinking uh, growth. Um, I mention that uh, specifically because perhaps in the business community, businesses can only grow as fast as the infrastructure that keeps up with them. So as we travel, there are times we see other communities, uh, be it Carmel or some of these others that are keeping ahead of some of those growth and they have a robust economy to go with it. And so with the university, with I-69, with I-65, we've got a lot of opportunity to really draw in folks and I'm just encouraging I feel like that would really help the west side in regards to, to growth if we had infrastructure ahead of some of that growth. The second of all, um, the sewer services would provide a benefit to our church greatly. And I mention that because we're a nonprofit organization and so any funds that we bring in are not because we collect dues or we have fees. Um, anything that we do is, is just donations that comes our way. And so uh, I mentioned that because it would be far more cost effective for us as volunteers within the community, um, be more cost effective for us to pay you than it would be to have a private septic service put in when you're talking about a church of 250 or so, something in the auditorium that we're looking at. And we would rather put the money in your pockets. We wanna see the city of Bloomington utilities thrive, uh, perhaps rather than having a private septic system that we set up on the side. So just to tell you a little bit about ourselves, uh, we offer free English lessons to those who are international students. Uh, we've got folks from India and China and, and uh, various places that come for those. We had the Child Protective Services call us two weeks ago and we have, uh, not for an incident within our church, but we have a faith-based counselor there. And so we didn't reach out to Child Protective Services, they reached out to us, they said, we've got this individual, we'd like you to work with them. He said, well, I can put together a proposal. He did, and in putting that together, they said, we want you to go forward with this. So he did, and after he, this individual was assessed, they said, you have, you have exceeded any expectations that we had, that a faith-based minister could be able to accomplish this. And so I'm just saying, we, um, uh, we are not like a restaurant that charges uh, fees as people come in. I do funerals, I do weddings, I was at the hospital on Friday for chaplaincy work. We're constantly, we have hundreds of hours that we put into the community from a service standpoint. Um, we've got a couple from our church that's in Uganda as be today they began doing some ministry with offering medical missions. So I guess I just mentioned that uh, we are trying to have our dollars stretch as much as possible. And if we pay more for infrastructure, then it, it, it cuts back on the resources that we have to put back in the community. But our heart's in the community. We want the money to go to people, not necessarily unnecessary expenses. So I'm just trying to communicate as a representative of, of our church, uh, which is about 120 now, uh, just communicate that we would like to have our dollars stretch. It's, it's in our best interest that the city of Bloomington is successful, and that is my desire. Because when you're successful, then you allow to have a better customer base to meet the, the needs of the customers. And then we feel like it'll also help the business community just to be forward thinking on the west side. And so we would just respectfully um, ask if you would consider for the sake of westward expansion, and us allowing our dollars to stretch and even to receive, we'll pay for the utility line to connect to the septic, uh, the sewer rather, uh, and then the monthly fee that goes along with that. But if you just consider because of its location and proximity to the city, um, us as an exception, we would greatly appreciate that. Um, thank you for coming to speak with us this evening and for the service that you do do for our community. Um, I just have a clarifying question. Um, so this property, and I looked it up a couple weeks ago because sure, I think they absolutely. thought you were coming. Um, it's west of Ivy Tech on the same side of the road as Ivy Tech. Is that correct? That's correct. And it's a property that is um, vacant? It's a vacant? It is lot. vacant, okay. yes. And it does not have 
um, any existing infrastructure? Because is it a lot that's for sale? It, I, it I is. looked it up, and on the listing, it listed that it does have city sewer hookup. That's why I was good. Open. Well, I mean that we we see a city uh, we see a sewer um, circle that's right in front of the property, but the house that's built there is from 1939, and they said that they just have a septic system okay, that they so. never connected. So visually, when I stand there, like I see the sewer ring, it's like okay. right there. But yeah, I, have, I have no idea about it. I was just going off of what right. the MLS listing just to try to learn a little bit more. And about that the was property. our impression that the line runs to the property. That was mm -hmm. our impression. Of course, we don't have the diagrams that you all have, but just visually seeing that sewer grate. And then they said when they lived there, the house from 1939, they said they didn't want to pay the 10000 to connect to it. When okay. it came through, they're like, we're fine the way it is. Well, now that we want to acquire that property, we want to tap into that. Right. Um, so that's, that's where we are okay. on that. Um, well, so. Um, if there's not existing infrastructure that's already serving the property, then um, unfortunately with the um, ongoing litigation with the city versus the county residents against the annexation, then um, there are no more um, extensions being offered that do not already have a will serve. Okay. And so um, at our um, subcommittee meeting earlier, or just about a month ago, which I think kind of cross times with oh, okay. your appeal with this. Um, so at this time, our board is not able to um, grant any appeals. Um, and so I'm sorry that does not help you move forward with your project with connecting to city sewer. Um, I don't know what that might look like in a year from now after the litigation, if the litigation mm -hmm. has um, ended mm -hmm. and, and, and there might be a, a different opportunity. Yes. But at this point with our board, we're not able to Grant any appeals. We realize it's been kind of divisive. We've never been a part of the opposing, the annexation side. We just happen to be caught up in the middle of a lot yeah. of tension, and mm -hmm. we're just just trying to move forward. I that's certainly all, understand that's that. That's all we're trying to do. I'm sorry. Yes, Molly. Yeah, um, <clears throat> I didn't realize how close the property was um, to IB Tech. And is is there any? I know the adjacent, um, like voluntary annexation. Is that? something that would be it's adjacent to the city bound jurisdictional boundary in which okay it's different than being adjacent to, to a, a to a hookup city. yeah gotcha yeah, yeah. um I don't see. <laughs> is there an, it, yes amanda it's, it's it is what what board member parmenter said i mean i i do feel like our hands are tied right now um mm. I, I, I guess my only thing would be to encourage you to make your appeal and your complaints to the city. I mean, okay. as, because this litigation, there are so many people that are in your boat right now. Mm. And um, because they did not have that will serve, yes. staff here is asked to not appeal. You know, there, there's, there's no appeal. Board members, we cannot do, I mean, we, are, we cannot do anything due to the litigation mm, and that makes sense and i i apologize that you came to you know to do the presentation um because as, as as megan said i think things have kind of crossed mm -hmm. when we had our, our our meetings and the last when this was supposed to be on the agenda last time so got it but I do think it's helpful for us to hear another project that's mm -hmm. not been able to move forward mm -hmm. connecting to city sewer yes. that would like to, um, because we don't necessarily always know that. If, mm -hmm. if a, a potential customer or customer or potential customer mm -hmm. doesn't come and appeal to the board, we don't necessarily hear that there have been mm -hmm. um, denials. Yes. So um, I, I hate it. I, I appreciate you coming today. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry that we're not able to provide you with a, an answer. We, we can't vote on it, yes or no. Yes, that's we, true. We're no decision. So. I just appreciate the discussion, the opportunity to present, Absolutely. you know, where we're coming from and to meet you all. And thank you for your service to the community. Obviously, it's a huge commitment on your part and a lot of stress at times. So we just want to say thank you. Thank you. And good thank luck you. moving forward with your project in whatever way is best for your congregation. So appreciate thank it. You. Thank you so much. Um, all right, moving on with our agenda. We have approval of our minutes from a previous meeting on October 21st. Do we have any questions, corrections, additions? Hearing none, do we have a motion to approve? Second. All in favor, please say aye. 
Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Next, we have approval of the claims. First, our standard invoices in the amount of $2,171,261.62. Are there any questions? Yes. Um, so I, I have a general question and then some specific examples. Um, so there's, you know, we have uh, claims that come in for, um, for the trainings and, and typically I've noticed they're specific to the, one of the three utilities and it, it's obvious which one it is. And we have a couple here for American Water Works Association that all, that, um, well, in one case, all of it's going to water, and in one case, it's split. And then, then we have a whole bunch that are, well, we have one for this FFB PACP training. I don't know what that is. Um, and then we have a whole bunch to WEF Tech, W-E-F Tech. And in some cases, they all go to wastewater. In other cases, they're split between the utilities. And I didn't know if, if there's a reason for um, like the WEFTEC, for example, if it really is all wastewater or if it actually should be split or, or there's some method to those, those distinctions between them. And I realize none, none of them are large amounts of money, but you know this is something that I always <laughs> pay attention to, so I, I, I'm wondering what the, what, what's going on here. So if, if the person worked at a wastewater uh, treatment plant, they would be charged with all wastewater. Um, if they're working at the Monroe plant, they would get charged with all water. Um, or if, um, I'll, I'll use Hector as an example. He's the assistant director for operations, and he went, so he was over kind of all of it, so we probably spread him over both, right? So okay. it, it all just depends on, on who we're paying for. Okay. What's the WEF tech training? It's, an, it's a annual conference for, for, for water. For mostly wastewater, mostly wastewater, yeah. But they have stuff there for okay. general, okay. Stuff. So yeah. it does get okay, okay, yeah. That just confused me a little bit. Mm -hmm. Good, well, I'm glad that that um, you guys are paying attention to that. I'm trying for answering my questions. <laughs> yeah. no, 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 no problem. Thank you. Other questions? I have a few. First, on page two with engraving and stamp center, engraving for the employee of the meet, a month plaque. Mm -hmm. I've not heard about employee of the month. So I would just be um, excited to hear about that each month. Okay. Uh, it's out at Blucher Plant, and I'm, I'm oh, assuming great. it's okay. something that Tyler, the superintendent out there, is doing. Great. And so, yeah, we can ask who he's putting as the, to yes, give you an update for that. we'd love to hear and recognize that person and thank them for their great service that month. Okay, yeah. thank you. Um, next, my other question um, was on pages four and five. Um, there were a few for PACE analytical services, and it probably is, I mean, it could be something that's on here that I've just not seen before, but the annual pretreatment sampling for Catalans. And um, I was just wondering if you could tell me a little bit more about that, please. Yeah, um, uh, sorry, I haven't been doing this. James Hall, Assistant Director of um, TND. Um, so the pretreatment program um, by permit um, is required to sample um, our industrial users each year, depending on the type of classification they are, if they're metal finishers or what they are, um, the EPA dictates to us how many times per year we need to sample them or more if we choose to do mm -hmm. that. And so I'm guessing that's what this is. There's a lot of organics and metals and other things in there. Um, they're all the same number. We may have got samples or three different invoices back. Sometimes yeah. if we submit all the samples at once and they get results back at different times, they'll send us invoices over different things. But I'm assuming by the cost of these, there's organics in there because yes. they're usually really expensive. And so that's what that is. And we actually will bill Catalent back okay. and they will pay us. So anytime we do pretreatment sampling, the industrial user, we will bill them after the fact. But we send it in, pay for it, and then bill them for the cost Perfect. of those. Thank you. That was actually my follow-up question. Yeah. So you knew it. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Hearing none, do we have a motion to approve the standard invoices? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next, we have utility bills in the amount of $13,661.04. Are there any questions? Hearing none, do we have a motion to approve? Aye. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next, we have wire transfers in the amount of $581,399.71. Are there any questions? 
Well, you know, it's my monthly comment about our Chase credit card fees of $32,067.57 and our NPC credit card fees of $347.05. And um, Matt, I know we asked you this, but can you just give us an update on our uh, plan for implementation? Yeah, I'm hoping to have the contract to the board at the, at the next meeting. Great, we'll mm -hmm. look forward to it. Thank yep. you. Okay, any other questions about wire transfers? Do we have a motion to approve? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Finally, we have customer refunds in the amount of $6,907.21. Are there any questions? Hearing none, do we have a motion to approve customer refunds? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Moving on, we have approval of the consent agenda in the amount of $21,302.20. James Hall. Yes, uh, James Hall, um, Assistant Director of TND. I'm pleased uh, to present tonight's consent agenda totaling $21,302.20. Um, the first um, contract on there is for Smithville for $214.95 per month for internet upgrades at Dillman Wastewater Treatment Plant. The second item is for $99 per month internet upgrade at Monroe Water Treatment Plant. And then the last um, contract on there is for Brehop Corporation for $10,000 for on-call services for air compressor and crane services. And these are all pending controller office approval. Is there any member who wishes to consider one or more of these items individually? I have just one question about A and B. Okay. So, I can we do that? Yeah. Okay, thank you. All right, so I just wondered, I see on here Dillman and Monroe, but do we not need an internet upgrade at Butcher Pool, or is that something we've already done, or is that's, on the line? That's a part of another project with, with ITS. Thank you, yep. okay. okay, all right. Um, hearing none, if there's no opposition to these items, these items will be approved as recommended by staff. Hearing no opposition, the consent agenda is approved. Thank, thank you. you. All right, next we have requests for approval of the 2024 store residential stormwater grants for 903 and 909 North Park Ridge Court. Sorry, uh, James Hall, I'm gonna do that Thank for you. Liz. She got caught downtown. Um, I'm speaking with her, so this is a resident, um, she's planning to bring the rest of the residential grants programs in two weeks to you. This individual wanted to get started right away to try to kind of beat plant some of the planting stuff because most of the projects won't happen until next year. And this individual wanted to get started early. And so this is um, part of that, um, the residential grant program, I think is for 16, maybe $1,900. $1,900, yeah. 1742. None of us are right. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Um, thank you. Questions for James? Um, I'll look forward when Liz comes back because I, I, I noticed that we didn't have uh, we, like a third or a fourth of the applicants that we've previously had. And I know mm -hmm. we've moved the residential stormwater grant cycle in the year um, mm -hmm. to, to actually benefit our, our recipients. Um, so I'll be interested to hear a little bit more about that. And Seth, were you on that committee as well? Yeah. So we'll let you share then. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so do we have a motion to approve? Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. All right. Um, do we have any old business from the board? Old business from staff? New business from the board? New business from staff? Um, there were no subcommittee meetings, but our property and planning subcommittee will be meeting on the 18th. Um, do we have any staff reports? Uh, yes, I have a few things here. Um, we had a new inventory coordinator start. Her name is Valerie Perry. That's in the finance group. Great. Um, we had a couple people um, uh, move up to um, different roles. Uh, Shane Ira, who was a uh, operator at the plant, is now the assistant superintendent at Monroe Water Treatment Plant. Um, he's been here since uh, 2010, so and he's awesome. very smart and very capable, and glad to have him. Great. And then Austin Bennington, um, who works in my group, has accepted um, the position as assistant superintendent over our stormwater group, um, and Great. he's, yeah, a good, sharp young man. And that's all. Okay, thank you. Well, thank welcome. You. Congratulations to all those folks. Thank you. Okay. 
Um, are there any additional petitions or communications? Hearing none, do we have a motion to adjourn? Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, everybody.